What's up, Dream Warriors? Welcome back to another episode of a podcast on Elm Street. I'm Mark. And I'm Brooke. And this is week two of our prehistoric horror movies. And we're coming at you guys with, uh, I don't know, like King of the Water. Well, not really. I don't know. Maybe uh, s- second in command in the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyways, we are talking about 1999's Lake Placid. Yes, we are. And uh, no, this movie does not take place in Michigan. <laughs> no, it does not. Because <laughs> that's where Lake Placid actually is. Isn't there one in New York, too? I feel like there's one in New York. Maybe it's New York I'm thinking of then. Mm-hmm. Regardless, it doesn't take place at the actual Lake Placid. No. Um, yeah, fuck. It takes place in Maine, and it wasn't even filmed in Maine. <laughs> um, when was the last time that you watched this movie? Probably like 2001, 2002. Oh, wow. Okay. That Remember we had, we had this movie on, I think VHS, but it may have been DVD. Mm. But I used to watch this movie a lot when yeah. I was a, a kid. Yeah. I haven't watched it since. Okay. You have it on DVD now? Because you, yeah, you I got it. Uh, yeah, I got it at um, when we went to Pembroke or one of the, we did a trip a few months ago. I got it at a pawn shop. Oh, okay. I nice. got like 10 movies for like five bucks. So <sighs> that was love, one of them. Yeah. Gotta love pawn shops. This is one of them. Very nice. All right. Excuse me. Um, before we start talking about this movie, what have you been up to this week? This week, um, watched uh, a little bit. Um, not many horror movies. Uh, I watched Awesome Powers International Man of Mystery in honor <laughs> of his 25th birthday. Uh, I still think that movie holds up. Uh, other people think otherwise, but... Yeah. I'm one of those other people. Yeah, I think it's still <laughs> fucking funny. Um, I'll probably watch the second, second or third one because I haven't watched those in a while. Yeah. Uh, I watched a movie that you recommended on Netflix called Metal Lords. Mm. Uh, had a great time with it. I really liked the one kind of cameo actor they have. Yeah. I didn't expect him to show up and play the guy <laughs> he thought. He yeah. looked weird with bald hair. <laughs> um. And then, yeah, like the the music and stuff. Like, I was texting you. I was like, mm-hmm. "I just must have paid a fortune for this because they have so many songs in it." And, and then there's like some cameos in it. It's like very quick. Mm-hmm. But I think it's because uh, what's the guy's name from Rage Against the Machine? Uh, Tom Morello. Tom Morello. He was an executive producer on this, so I'm sure he just like got favors. Yeah, I was gonna say called in some favors. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I liked it. Um, the one kid's from It, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the other kid, he this was his first movie. I thought he did a good job. I thought he did so good, man. Yeah. Like, I was surprised yeah. when I saw it was his first movie. Yeah, I really liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then lastly, I went and watched The Northman, mm-hmm. Robert Eggers' uh, latest masterpiece. Um, I absolutely loved it. I thought it was really good. Yeah. I'm jealous. Yeah. Was there like any horror elements to it at all? There's some brutal kills. Yeah. Yeah. And like, just like the stuff that happened back then, like be fucking nuts to, Mm. because basically like at the start, he joins like a clan of berserkers Mm -hmm. and like just the way they did, they basically just get high on hallucinogenics and then just go raid towns and like, if they die, that's like the highest honor they can get because like they're trying to get to Valhalla. Yeah. So they just don't give a fuck. That's fucking wild, man. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Could you imagine living back then and like, ah, yeah, I'm gonna go in and I hope I die. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's really good. I liked it. Nice. Yeah, I really want to watch it. Yeah, you can actually even pre-order the 4K already. Oh, can you? Yeah, I was going to do it on Amazon, but I might see if I can snag if they release like a steel book or something on mm-hmm. Best Buy. Yeah. So, yeah. I feel like you've watched it, but I feel like it's one that would really benefit from watching it in theaters. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Hmm. I got to get out there. Yeah. Yeah. Eggers has like knocked all three of his movies out of the Mm -hmm. park. Like this dude is on another level. Like whenever on the trailer for the Northern lay of like him, it's like from the visionary director. Yeah. Like I think he's earned that title for sure. Definitely. After only three movies. Yeah. 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 So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Sweet. Yeah. How about you? Uh, I'm shorter than you are. Oh, wow. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I've watched one movie this week. Okay. Uh, I don't know what's been going on lately, man. Like I went on a tear for a couple weeks and watched like fucking 25 movies in two weeks. And then these last like two or three weeks, I've watched like one, two, maybe three movies each week. Yeah. I mean, you started a new job. Yeah. But I figured I'd have all the time in the world. I'm on straight days, but that's true. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, well. Anyways, um, the guy that is running that horror draft that Josh told us about. Yeah. So I obviously added him on Instagram, like on our podcast Instagram. Mm -hmm. And he had like a raving review for this movie. Um, Mm -hmm. He gave five stars, said he was like one of the most fun he's ever had watching a movie, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And there's only one day left for it before it got off to be. Okay. So I was like, okay, I'm going to watch it tonight then. Uh, But anyways, it's called Bad Channels from 1992. Mm -hmm. It was fun, but it does not deserve five stars, in my opinion. Um, I don't want to say I got cheated, Mm -hmm. but uh, because everybody has their own opinions. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's not as good as I was expecting it to be, but it it was fun enough. But Mm -hmm. unfortunately for you, you won't be able to watch it now. (laughs) <laughs> i'm sure i can find my ways but yes. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but yeah other than that haven't done too too much um i streamed again on saturday night mm-hmm. uh i've been busting out some apex again continuously yeah. uh the new season drops tomorrow so i'm excited for that oh shit yeah and uh oh i started watching the john wayne gacy tapes Oh, we watched. finished it. Yeah. Yeah. It's only three episodes long. Mm-hmm. I've only watched the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know if they were doing like a week by week thing or if there was actually a deal, only the three, but yeah. Um, but yeah, the first episode is really good. I'm excited to finish it. Yeah. It's, it's good series. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Not nice. a whole lot. It's a busy weekend, mother's day weekend, shit like yeah, that. So exactly. But Yeah. All right, man. Ready to dive into this movie? <laughs> yes, we are. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Like we said in the intro, this week we're talking about Lake Placid from 1999. Before we do, what are you drinking? Uh, so I got two on the go. Well, Holy I got one shit. lined up. Usually I have like tall boys or whatever. So, yeah. Um, I guess I'll start with this one. It's a Dominion City Foam Slayer. Oh, okay. Uh, sounds cool. It does. And then sound I got cool. uh, points of order on backup. Nice. Yeah. So it's kind of weak. Well, Better it's a foam my, slayer. My screen. That's true. <laughs> you foam me, all right. Is it? Yeah. It's good, though. I am drinking Dominion Cities. Moment of clarity. Nice. Which is an 8%. So I'm getting loot. <laughs> yeah, I only have a few more of these left. So oh yeah, that's eight percent all right. <laughs> okay. Starting off with the synopsis. This is quite a synopsis. Um, three people attempt to stop a gigantic crocodile who is terrorizing residents in Black Lake, Maine. Mm-hmm. That's all. Um, first of all, there's more than three people. <laughs> Significantly more than three people. Um, but yeah, it's it's a pretty basic synopsis. The movie's not overly. Uh, I don't know what the word is that I'm looking for, but. I don't know. It whatever. It was directed by Steve Miner, who we are know 
Stranger 2. Nope. Because he directed Friday the 13th Part 2, which is a movie that we did way back when. Mm-hmm. Um, and he also did Friday the 13th Part 3. Yep. He did House, which is a fucking incredible movie. That's crazy. <laughs> so much fun. Um, he did nine episodes of The Wonder Years, and he also did Halloween H2O. Uh-huh. Um, a little bit of trivia. So they had to put production of Lake Placid on hold for a little while because of uh, weather. Like the weather was shitty. They couldn't oh, film. Okay. Um, so he actually took the job of Halloween H2O while he was like in limbo with Lake Placid. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. I don't know if he filmed the whole movie during that like hiatus, uh-huh. but yeah, definitely did some of it. Um, the cast is pretty fucking impressive. Like it's an all-star nineties yeah. cast. Yeah. Um, starting off with Bridget Fonda who played Kelly. Uh, she is known for single white female point of no return, a simple plan, uh, monkey bone finding. I find- fucking <laughs> love monkey bone. When I was like a teenager, yeah. I loved Brendan Fraser and like, I'm pretty sure the movie's god awful. Oh yeah. But I used to watch it so much. Um, back when you could like rent movies on your satellite dish, like whenever mm-hmm. you actually had a satellite dish, yeah. uh, my cousin and I rented it one night and you yeah. could watch it as many times as you wanted. And I think we watched it like three or four times okay. in the Have you ever hour. seen a simple plan? Uh, not this one. Cause yeah. isn't, isn't there a newer one? Yeah, I think it has Blake Lively. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. not Allison Brie. Um, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Oh, what the fuck's her name? She's from fucking Twilight. No, she's not. No, no, no it's the girl from uh, Mike and Dave Need Wedding Dates and 50 50. What's her name? Um, Oh, no, that's a simple favor. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Anna Kendrick. Yes, she is in fucking Twilight. Anna Kendrick's in Twilight? It's not obviously not her biggest role. I don't know why I pictured her in that. I had no idea she was in Twilight. Yeah. Was she not? Pitch Perfect. Yeah, she was definitely in Twilight. Are you sure you're not thinking of Kristen Stewart? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, she is. She played Jessica Stanley. Oh, I had no idea. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, a simple plan. Um, the Rainer, they just did, uh, they ranked all the Sam Raimi movies because um, mm. Doctor Strange is coming out. Yeah. And they had a simple plan at number two. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. I didn't know that was even a Sam Raimi movie. Yeah. And you know, they had a number one, which. We definitely don't agree with. It's going to be fucking. Uh, what's it called? Evil Dead. Not Evil Dead 2. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Fuck sakes. Yeah. Why? I don't get but it. They had Army of Darkness, I think, number three. Oh, my God. Three or four. Yeah. Fuck me. I don't get it. Anyway, she's also in Army of Darkness. I don't know if I said that or not. I don't think you did. No. No. Yeah. But uh, she is, she's <clears throat> Peter Fonda's daughter, mm-hmm. um, Henry Fonda's granddaughter, and uh, what's Jane the Fonda? Jane Jane Fonda's niece? Uh, okay, yeah, and she's a terrible actress. I didn't think she was t- that bad in this one. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mentioned in my reviews, like she's got Hollywood royalty in her blood. Yeah. And I don't know. She was disappointing. But anyways, next up is Bill Pullman, who plays Jack. Um, he's in both of the Independence Day movies. Uh, he was in Casper, which is a movie that we've done. Yep. Um, Spaceballs, mm-hmm. The Sinner, mm-hmm. uh, American Ultra, which is such a fun movie. Dude, I literally, I went to Walmart the other day. 
I was looking through like the five dollar bin. Yeah. And I found American Ultra on Blu-ray. Nice. So I grabbed it. I've never seen it before. So oh really? Yeah. It's, it's super fun. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. Uh he's also in the Equalizer one and two and the grudge. And he's also another movie that uh I added to my watch list, but it's called The Serpent in the Rainbow. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's a Wes Craven movie. Mm-hmm. I've never seen that either, but I've heard good things. I think it's on Shutter. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up, I have Oliver Platt, who plays Hector. Uh, he's in Three Musketeers, Bicentennial Man, 2012, Chicago Med, and like all of those Chicago TV shows. He's in like all of yeah. them. Um, the Big C, Year One, and Benny and June. Uh, I love Year One. I think it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, it's like it's not a good movie, but yeah, I think it's so funny. Mm-hmm. And then also, I put down. Uh, do you ever remember the movie Tall Tale? You ever watched that as a kid? I don't, I don't know. The kid like uses imagination and it imagines some like cowboy and then turns like his whole world into like the Western. Mm, I don't know. Uh, I also remember him from Dr. Doolittle with Eddie Murphy. Yes. Yeah. I used to religiously watch that movie. Um, and then he's also in Simon Birch, which is a pretty good yeah, movie. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's in a lot of really good movies. Mm-hmm. Tall Tale, The Unbelievable Adventures of Picos Bill. Is that fucking Patrick Swayze? It is, too. Wow. Yeah, no, I really don't remember this movie. Like, at all. Hmm. Hmm. Black and White from 1995. Um, lastly, on the cast list, I have Brendan Gleeson who plays Sheriff Hank. Uh, He has a whole shit ton of credits, but um, I put down The Guard, In Bruges, uh, Cold Mountain, Mr. Mercedes, Assassin's Creed, Paddington 2, and the Harry Potter franchise as Mad-Eye. I think he's in Gaines in New York as well. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And I have three honorable mentions. Okay. I have the queen, Betty White. Rest in peace. R.I.P. Um, she is so fucking good in this movie, man. <laughs> it is great. Like, oh, man. So funny. Yeah. What happened to your husband? Well, I killed him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So good. Uh, um, and then I have David James Lewis, who is okay. the, the one cop who gets his head bitten off. That plays Jed. Uh, is his name Jed? I can't remember if his name's Jed or not. Oh, okay. I didn't put his name down. But he's got like 196 acting credits or something like that. Mm. Something crazy. Um, Fuck, what was the one? I don't know why I didn't write it down. There was one that I just watched recently that he was in. Um, David James. Yeah, he was in like Dirk Gently. Uh, Oh, Child's Play. The Child's Play remake he was in. Okay. Plays a stepdad. Uh, and lastly, I have Jed Rees, who has a very, very small role. Um, I think he was flying the helicopter or he's driving the boat. Yeah, that's who I was thinking of, Jed. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So yeah. He, he's from The Ringer with yeah. uh, uh, yeah. Johnny Knoxville. Um, and yeah. uh, Galaxy Quest. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, also, I have Steve Miner. As a yeah. uh, guest, he played like like a helicopter pilot or something like that. Yeah, I guess in the hospital at the very beginning too, you can hear someone page Mister Minor over the intercom system. <laughs> that's that's funny. funny. All right, that's all I got, man. Cool. So let's talk about this movie. Cool. Uh, I feel like this movie is just in the sweet spot before we get like kind of the shitty like not funny 2000s movies Mm -hmm. so i feel like this movie is it's like it knows what it is like it's not a great movie but it's just like a really fun watch Mm -hmm. it's comedic uh the kills are like pretty good and like kind of out there like unexpected the cgi some of the CGI is like pretty shitty. It's god awful. 
but some of it is like not bad like i think it they must have used like real crocs in at least some of the shots or something so um yes some of it was animatronic Mm -hmm. and uh the animatronic um crocodile was created by stan winston who did the dinosaurs for jurassic park okay i knew that name looked familiar Mm -hmm. and aliens too actually Mm. um yeah and you can tell that uh Steve Miner, I think, like has obviously has experience with horror movies, mm-hmm. so I feel like he did a good job with this one. Like, yeah, it wasn't like it the wasn't bad. like the opening credits. You know, like nothing special, but you get that that score in there, mm-hmm. and it's just very reminiscent of like eighties movies. To yeah, me. it's very long, drawn out opening credits. Yeah, um, and we get like that top down. Uh, view of like the lake and everything like that yeah so yeah yeah, i definitely agree it's very reminiscent and uh so the opening scene there's like a scuba diver and um what's his name uh i wrote down on my other notes but i didn't sheriff hank yeah hank uh he's like in a boat with a scuba diver and they're i'm not sure what they're doing exactly but he's like and investigating like the beaver dam Mm-hmm. and uh i love like when the shot like is him underwater yeah and then like you see like the camera going towards him it had very jaws ish mm-hmm. music playing yeah i thought that was great yeah the underwater scenes in this were really cool that cause... has that that's what i said later on too like yeah yeah because like they're very dark it's a very dark looking lake yeah, it's like um... dirty and like murky and yeah, it, it just looks like a lake. It almost and like it almost looks like a swamp in a sense. Like mm-hmm. like you can kind of understand why this crocodile would would be living there. Yeah, exactly. Even though it's a freshwater lake, but well, yeah. I think crocs can live in both, can't they? Well, Fresh they say salt. in this movie that he, they can't go in salt water, but then like they're arguing that like oh well he migrated here from somewhere, so from and the, the ocean. ocean connects into it. Yeah. Yeah. Plot hole. Yeah, exactly. But I thought there was maybe it's alligators, like there's fresh water and salt water. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh and uh so yeah, you meet so he gets bit in half and like <laughs> <laughs> uh Hank like pulls him out of the fucking water, then he just like fucking half his body is gone. It's like damn man. Mm-hmm. So he just gets right into it. And like those effects looked really good. They did, yeah. Like yeah. his guts are just like spraying out, not spraying out, but like there's just like falling out, falling out all over the boat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it cuts to New York. We meet Kelly. She's a paleontologist. Yeah. And this part of the story, like it just felt kind of like forced. Like it didn't make really much sense. Mm-hmm. Like even Kelly acknowledges it a little bit and so does the cast like they're kind of like breaking the fourth wall a bit it seems like Mm -hmm. because she's like a paleontologist and she gets cheated on by her boss who she was like with or something like that Mm -hmm. um (laughs) i love whenever the girl comes in who's like cheating on with her whatever yeah and she's like i just don't know what to say i mean you know, I guess your heart just knows what it wants. And then <laughs> Kelly gives her like the dirtiest look. Like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, basically her boss gets a call from Maine and they say that this alligator or crocodile attacked and they have a tooth. And he wants to send her there to, I guess, investigate the tooth. Yeah. And then she's like, I don't want to go to Maine to investigate a tooth. Like, yeah, it's like just fucking mail it. She's like, it's not even a prehistoric tooth. Like, why? Like, why am I fucking looking at this thing? Yeah, yeah. Like, it could be anybody. Like, it could be a biologist that looks at it, or like, Mm -hmm. like anyone could determine what kind of tooth it was. Yeah, exactly. Like, just fucking ship it to her, and then she can investigate in her lab rather than like going there and like, what's the point of her going there? Like, even. 
everyone else, like Hank and Jack, like keep making fun of her about her being a museumist. And she's like, oh, does this town not love museums or something like that? <laughs> you, you just said a word, museumist. Is that a word? No. I, don't, okay. don't, <laughs> I know that uh, listeners or friends are going to hate me because whatever Ross is in that show, he's uh, that's his job. He's a museumist. We'll just say that. Okay, sure. Fuck sure. it. We're, we're making up words in this. <laughs> uh, what do you think of Kelly? I've already told you. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know. Like, do you mean like the character? Yeah, or... the character. Uh, I don't know. I think she's a fucking whiny city yuppie. Yeah, I thought at the beginning, like, she was a like massive bitch. Like, mm-hmm. I did not like her. Like, she... Yeah, but then I think like as her kind of uh, relationship grew with Jack and Hector and like the cast of characters, like mm-hmm. her comedy kind of like fit in, meshed well with them. Yeah, but like she started off like, oh, I have a thing with mosquitoes. Like, bitch, everybody has things with mosquitoes. Nobody fucking <laughs> likes mosquitoes. She has a big fucking can of Raid. Yeah. Like spraying. Yeah. Sprays it right into like Hank's face and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. If I was all of them, I wouldn't be bringing her out onto that lake. Yeah. Like, you stay in the hotel, we'll bring the tooth back to you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, so you find out that uh, the lake they're on is actually called Black Lake, mm-hmm. not Lake Flaccid. And at first, I was like, like, I, it kind of pissed me off. It's like, why not just name it, like, Lake Black or, like, the movie or just have it set in like plastic but that i like that later on they hank says like she questions him like well it kind of looks like a lake plastic or something like that yeah and he's like oh they wanted to call it that but i guess it was taken already <laughs> <laughs> thought that was funny yeah yeah i never really clued in like they do break the fourth wall a few times in this movie mm-hmm. like it's very indirectly but yeah it's yeah. definitely there yeah exactly uh, and then we meet Betty White's uh, character, Dolores. She is so fucking funny. Like, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so they go to her house because, like, she's basically the only one that lives on this lake. Yeah. And they're, like, questioning her. And she's like, oh, yeah, my husband died years ago. Like, I just live alone. And they're like, oh, what happened to your husband? Like, how did he die? Was he sick? And she's like, oh, I killed my husband. Yeah. No, I can't. And like them. they're just like <laughs> sitting there, like what? And she's like, "Oh yeah, like uh, he was sick and he wasn't doing very well, and he kept telling me like, oh, just end my suffering.' So she's like, "Well, one day he just kind of convinced me, so I hit him in the head with a skillet <laughs> <laughs> and I buried him out back." Yeah. She's like, "Do you want me to go dig up the body? I'll show you." Yeah. <laughs> Man, the lines that she delivered in this movie are so fucking funny and so Betty White. Yeah. It like I was watching and I was just like, oh my God. Like she lived to be like how old was she? Like 99 or something like that. Yeah, she's 99. Yeah. But I mean it still feels like we're missing out on so much from her. Yeah. Um there was a couple lines that she had. Uh I'm looking them up right now. Too. Later on she says one to uh not Jack uh to Hank. Mm-hmm. And because she's like, we find out that she's feeding her cows to the fucking <laughs> crocodile. <laughs> so they go and ask her, and she like hates the cop because they want to kill the gator, obviously. But mm-hmm. um, she like thinks, oh, it's just like her pet now, basically. She's been yeah. feeding it for six years. And <laughs> she says to Hank, if I had a dick, this is where I'd tell you to suck it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh man i laughed so hard at that line she's so good uh what was another one i think i wrote it down but i have, have it if you have it handy there she's talking to hank again her and hank have the best dialogue together oh, she calls him fuck meat yeah that's what i was just about to read <laughs> um yeah she goes thank you officer fuck meat um Another time she goes, I'm rooting for the crocodile. I hope he swallows your friends whole. You want to, you might want to arrest me for that too. Is that a crime to wish the chewing of law enforcement? (laughs) Yeah. 
uh yeah she was fucking hilarious and um even bill pullman like i really liked him in this movie like his kind of like line deliveries and his Mm -hmm. his sense of humor is like i don't know it's like very dry and like he doesn't put any effort into it but like just his lines um uh what happens i think this before i think it's after they find out that uh they i think gator eats somebody but anyway bill pullman like looks at hank and he's like well sheriff how many deputies do you have and like <laughs> just like his delivery of the line is like just i don't know, i love it yeah all of the characters had really good dialogue. Like Hector had some really good ones too. Yeah. Um, him and Hank again, like, I don't know if it's just Brendan Gleeson who is just really good at being like in these exchanges throughout the movie or like, I don't know. It's just like, cause he gets into them with, uh, with Betty white with Dolores mm-hmm. and then he gets into it with Hector all the time. Yeah. And then even him and Kelly at the beginning, they're like bickering back and forth constantly. Yeah. It's yeah. just, yeah. Yeah. You meet Hector. He's a professor and basically like a crocodile uh, researcher, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and him and Kelly are like, she knows of him and they, he knows her, but I don't know like how, like it's see, they make it out to seem like they have uh, um, like tension and stuff between them. Yeah. Like, I think they've definitely worked together before. Mm-hmm. but yeah he's he's just like this rich guy who is just obsessed with crocodiles and yeah i think she said she makes mention like he swam with every crocodile in the world or something like that yeah yeah so uh yeah so they're camping out uh hector like sets up a few like land traps mm-hmm. like a spring trap uh, ha- uh hank ends up falling in one later on and gets hung up yeah um but yeah uh so yeah the largest crocodile to ever live that they found fossils of was 40 feet long jesus christ and it weighed seventeen thousand pounds Seventeen thousand. yeah seventeen eight hundred pounds oh my god yeah and then the lar- largest one ever recorded is 20 feet long. Yeah, I saw that one. Which was like, its name is like Papillon or something like, some weird like that. Yeah. Yeah. But- A 40 foot croc. Yeah. I want to, I want to like see this in a comparison to a human. I mean, like you think of like the Megalodon too, right? Like, yeah. These fucking creatures lived at one point. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, here we go. What objects are 40 feet long? Well, there you go. Think of it like a semi, like a, a transport truck. Their trailer, mm-hmm. that's, they're 50, 53 feet. Yeah. Um, a bus, a shipping container. Like imagine a fucking crocodile that big, <laughs> man. Yeah. Oh my god. That'd be nuts. Wow. That's insane, man. Yeah. Uh so I had, I had a note here as well. We already talked about it, but like I said, the undersea underwater scenes um look pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh so now they're like in a wa- in the water, kind of looking for the crocodile. And this kill like surprised the fuck out of me. Yeah. And the gator just comes out and bites the fucking guy's head clean off like, yeah that was sick was that yeah that was the full size one that's been that they've been hunting yeah. for yeah. yeah 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 uh yeah then kelly falls in the water but she ends up getting uh saved and the gator was actually pretty smart here mm. because it like pulls the anchor oh right down is holding it and then it pulls the boat all the way away from Kelly Mm -hmm. and they had to like get back to her. Yeah. Uh, And then the next scene, uh, a brown bear just shows up out of the forest. Oh my God, man. (laughs) 
And at first, the brown bear like looked pretty good. Like the CGI looked decent. Yeah. But then it like stands by the water, and then the gator just fucking comes out of the water. It looks terrible. He uh, uh, deep blue sea, like with the fucking shark on uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, yeah, that's what yeah. he did to the bear. It was fucking that's crazy. Funny. Yeah, yeah. The fucking comes out, and just takes the bear in the water. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sarah watched the first half of this with me last night, mm-hmm. and uh, she had gotten up and she was like going to the washroom and then going to bed. And then this scene happened and I rewinded it and I called her back to the living room. I'm like, you need to fucking watch this before you go back to bed. And like, she was laughing, but she was just like, that was pointless. Why'd you call me back out here? But That's so I don't funny. know. I thought it was a fucking amazing scene. Yeah. I thought it was good too. Cause like the bear just like runs by like all the people. Yeah. It's like, I don't okay. know. Yeah. I don't understand. Like it runs by them. Stands in front of the lake and then gets up on its hind legs and starts roaring at them like yeah. bears do. I don't, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> um, yeah. What did you think of Kelly and Jack's chemistry? Like, did you buy their, like, kind of flirtatious? No. I feel like it was just forced into the movie to have, like, some sort of romantic connection. Oh, okay. Because yeah. you have to have it. I could see that. I, I did like their chemistry, like as actors together. Um, like I thought everyone like went off everyone really well. Yeah. Like, I guess as actors, they were all right, but like the relationship just, I don't know. Kind of pointless. Yeah. I don't buy into shit like this in movies like this. Like, like you're out there fearing for your life and like hunting mm-hmm. down this 40 foot crocodile. and You're not falling in love with anybody. No. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now they find out that Dolores is feeding cows to the croc. Mm-hmm. They're like up on this little island. They're searching for like its nest, basically. And Kelly ends up stepping on like a log and like flicks a head at her. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I'm sick of getting heads thrown at me. <laughs> <laughs> and then they see fucking Dolores come out with a cow mm-hmm. going down to the water. Yeah. And you see the croc just like in the water. And she's like, all right. Time for lunch. And then it just snatches the cow. Mm -hmm. And they're like amazed at seeing this. So they obviously go and talk to her. And yeah, this is where they find out that she's been feeding the cow for six years or Mm -hmm. not the cow, the croc for six years. And uh, her husband actually didn't get eaten by the crocodile because he got like in between the cow and the croc or the horse. I think it was a A horse. horse Yeah. A horse got loose and it was drinking out of the lake. Yeah. And they could see the croc coming in and he tried to get in between the two of them. Yeah. yeah. Which is fucking stupid. Like, yeah, I- I'm sorry. Like, I love horses. I think they're amazing creatures, but I'm not stepping in between that and a croc. Yeah. And she's like against them killing the crocodile. And they're like, well, how would like PETA feel about you treating cows this way? <laughs> <laughs> that was part of the trivia too, about that comment, because Betty White was apparently like, a very big advocate for PETA. Yeah. Yeah. So it was just kind of ironic that they put it in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. The one scene where you could tell is the animatronic gator was whenever Hector is in his like little helicopter. And then he's like swimming in, in by the nest for some reason. And then he like gets up and the gators like behind him and like, that was obviously an animatronic one. Yeah, so they they had built it so it could withstand being in the water. Mm. But uh, cool. yeah, I thought so. Um, but yeah, Hector has this thought in his mind where, because he swam with so many different crocodiles, right? Like he feels that he has this connection with them where they won't attack him. Yeah. And even in this scene, he turns around and he's like, oh, you're not like the other ones. And he no. like slowly starts swimming back to his, uh, um, to his helicopter. Yeah. I think he says something like along the lines, like, well, now I feel like an idiot or something like that. Yeah. 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 And he gets on the helicopter and then just like fucking mangles his, <laughs> the little fucking floaty part of it. Yeah. And then like the one girl, the deputy that's like with him, 
so so weird he's like going in and she's like oh hector don't go in and then she's just like i'll have sex with you yeah it's like what the fuck (laughs) i mean if she was offering i probably wouldn't have gone in the water yeah yeah me too yeah yeah but it's like (laughs) what i don't know i know a lot of the a lot of the writing was good for like the one-liners and shit, but then a lot of it was terrible yeah. like this. Yeah. I think this is like our episode next week, I think is going to be exactly like this movie kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Like just, you know, funny, stupid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, all this month pretty much, except for our last episode, it's going to be like that. That's very true. Yeah. I mean, we fucking did Velocipaster last That's week. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh yeah so now in like the final scene they are they decide that they're going to try and capture it um so they're going to try and lure it onto the water onto the land and then sit in their truck and try and shoot with tranquilizers Mm -hmm. uh hector and kelly want to keep it alive obviously but jack and hank want to kill it and like the whole time hank has this like fucking huge ass like I don't know what kind of gun it is. It's like a shotgun, but like. It's a made up gun. That's what I thought. Yeah. Cause yeah. the name he called it was like. Oh, it was ridiculous. Yeah. Um... But uh, yeah, so they're going to try and capture it. And during this scene, it's like at night and uh, they're like trying to lure it up. And then. Um. It gets up there. I think does it kill? I don't think it kills any of the main people. Uh, no, it doesn't. No. Um, how does it get into the copter? Well, okay, so, um, Jack's got the or Hector has the cow. Oh, suspended yes. over the water, yes. which, by the way, is a real fucking cow. Yeah. yeah. I was watching it, and I was like, this, this cow's real. That th- this is a fucking real cow. This is not CGI. No. But apparently they did it with a crane and then they like CGI'd everything into it afterwards. Uh, okay. I think they, well, they must have did it over water. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if they did the water and stuff CGI, but like obviously the helicopter and everything. Yeah. Was. Um, but yeah, so Hector is flying over the lake with the cow and he has it dipped in the water and it takes him like forever for the crocodile to start swimming towards it. Yeah. So then he ends up once the croc starts coming, he starts flying it closer to shore. Mm -hmm. And then the, does the croc, I don't think, no, the croc doesn't grab the cow. No, he's like losing control of the plane. And yeah, somehow the hook that's holding the cow, like snaps off and the cow falls in. Yeah. And you would think the cow would drown because it's in this net. Mm-hmm. And but I, then it shows up later swim? and just like walks off to the shore. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Yeah, I don't know if cows can swim or not. Yeah, so um, yeah, he crashes the copter. Yeah, something happens and the helicopter crashes. And then so he's kind of standing on the side of it, like where the, how would you call it? A floaty, where the floaty is. Uh-huh. So he's kind of standing on there. And then the croc comes up and hits the helicopter i think and he falls in and then eventually fucking what's her face falls in kelly falls into the water at the shore yeah because the the crocodile the croc smacks her with his tail yeah yeah exactly yeah and sends her flying into the fucking water so then she's trapped because the the croc is on land facing her so she can't swim to shore so she swims out to hector on the helicopter and where the hell did that tree come from right in the fucking <laughs> <laughs> underneath like, the water from the shore to the helicopter was like 30 feet 40 feet not even like i don't know 12 feet honestly like it wasn't that far no and the water's not that deep because when hector's bringing the cow and he's like okay we're in like four feet of water or something like that yeah so then she starts swimming out and all of a sudden Heck, well, Hector tells her to go underwater because apparently crocodiles won't attack underwater or they're less likely to attack underwater. 
the guy in the opening scene, he died in water. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I swear Hector said that they're less likely to attack under the water. Yeah. I don't know. Cause she's swimming towards him. And he says, go under then. Yeah. She just goes exactly. under and it's like, okay. And yeah, then there's this full fucking tree underneath the water. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. But then the like, croc goes like around and then tries to like jump through the middle of the helicopter yeah. to grab Hector and get stuck. Yeah. And then still like fucking goes nuts and gets up onto the shore, but he gets like a bunch of uh, tranks in him and he's like starting to calm down. Um I thought he was going to, like, snatch H- Hector because Hector was, mm-hmm. like, two feet from him. He's like, look, he's, like, he's half dead. Yeah. And it's very rare for a movie like this to have all four of the main characters survive. Yeah. And Hector would have been the per- – Hector and Gleason would have been the two – like, they would have been dead in any other movie other than this one. Yeah. Like, those two characters for sure would have been dead. Yeah. Uh, so, and then Hank, he has like his gun and then he's about to kill like the big gator, but then another smaller gator (laughs) comes up from the side and does he shoot, he shoots it first and blows up. Oh yeah. Hank fucks it up. He's like, they're like, oh my God, like there's two gators. And he's like, nope, now there's just one. (laughs) (laughs) And then uh, Jack grabs a gun. It's mm-hmm. not his gun, but they're like freaking out, like, oh, don't kill it. And then he ends up shooting it with the tranquilizer. Mm-hmm. And then uh, basically, I guess the um, what do you call it? What's like, Jack's job? Like the fishing game. And yeah. law enforcer or whatever the from like called. florida or something like that yeah like drove there i don't know florida to maine i think that's pretty fucking far yeah that's a solid like 18 to 20 hour drive <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh so they end up like taking the they say they take the gator to like seattle yes and it's like it was. and then like at the end it has like in a the after credit scene Kind of. It has, like, the gator, like, strapped to a transport. Yeah, on a flatbed. Well, there's driving from Maine all the way to fucking Seattle. Yeah. That's with literally the across the country. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, during that scene, all, like, all I could think of was, like, imagine driving down the 401, which is our major highway in Canada, and you just see a fucking crocodile on the back of a flatbed. Mm. like what the fuck would you do yeah i'd probably yeah. follow it for as long as i could yeah if i didn't have anything too. else to do exactly uh so yeah everyone like pretty much goes their separate ways jack and kelly have like a moment like they're they've had moments like the whole movie like whenever he gets bandaged up like they have that awkward like all right well do you want to uh go to bed yeah and then like kelly's like oh like or do you want to go to sleep? Sleep in bed or something like that? And she's like, oh no, we'll just go to our separate beds. Yeah, she like starts stumbling on her words and shit. <laughs> yeah, and then at the end of the scene, like, yeah, just weird, awkward convo between them. Yeah. Uh, and then like there's a af- not after credit scene, but like at the end of the movie, it has Betty White, Dolores coming down to their dock. She has like her bag of bread, mm-hmm. takes her shoes off, sits in them her dock, and She's throwing like bread into the water and she's like, all right, little babies, like eat, <laughs> eat your breakfast or whatever. And it's like yeah. little like crocodiles. Yeah. There's like five or six of them swimming around. Yeah. But they're like little, little, little. Yeah. Babies. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm kind of angry we, that I picked this movie or we picked this movie. Why? Because Letterboxd, it had like films like this. Oh. And there's five Blake Placid movies. I know. So now I feel like I got to watch them. <laughs> oh, okay. I get you. I was going to ask if you've seen any of the sequels. I didn't even know there was sequels. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I think there's Lake Placid 2, 3, 
And there's one that just came in 2018. And there's like fucking Lake Placid versus Anaconda, which makes zero fucking sense. Yeah, I think it's like the new one that came was like Lake Placid Odyssey or something. Lake Legacy. Legacy. Yeah, that makes more sense. Oh, there's Lake Placid 2, 3. Lake Placid, the final chapter. All oh, right. And Lake Placid Legacy. Yeah. And then there's also Lake Placid versus Anaconda. Yeah. Which, I mean, I don't know. Like, how the fuck does that make sense? The crocodile is not called Lake Placid. The lake is called Lake Placid. Yeah. So I'm just looking at the cast from the other movies. and I think they're very low budget. Yeah. Definitely. Just right on the name. Yeah. Okay, so get back to me after you've watched them all and let me know. I will, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I probably won't be. Yeah. Um, oh, I loved... <laughs> Kelly had some of the most ridiculous lines in the movie. Uh, whenever they're like, have the cow on the thing, like she just harness? like randomly yells like, he's mooing! Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then like Hector or Hank says like, yeah, it's a cow. That's what they do. <laughs> uh, fuck. Oh, I laughed so hard. I feel like they tried to write her to be like so much a city person. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, like I don't want to say stupid, but like, like wilderness stupid. I yeah. guess we can call it. Yeah. Yeah, she's definitely a city girl. Yeah. Yeah. But uh yeah. Uh anything else you wanted to add or mention that we didn't talk about? No, I'm good. All right. Uh well, that's the way the uh water splatters. So clean. Yeah, that's I didn't like that one. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. All right, man. What did you Rate this movie. This one was tough. I swapped mine like probably two or three times, to be honest. Um, so for story, I'm giving it a six out of ten. Okay. Uh, I said this is not an enthralling story, but it's good enough for creature feature. Uh, the movie's only 80 minutes, and I think that's like the perfect time for this movie. Uh, the characters are likable enough, and I thought the chemistry between them was really great. Nice. Uh, the writing I thought was really good too. We mentioned that, um, and then quality also gave it a six out of ten as well. Okay. I said the writing is funny and the acting was great. Uh, everyone is hilarious and knew what kind of movie that they were in. The setting was great, and I also love the score. The CGI was not good in most of the movie, but the animatronics uh, looked good. Okay. So, yeah, six oh, cool. for both of them. Nice. Um, our scores are very similar. I gave the story a five out of 10. Uh I said nothing overly special, but also not a bad movie at all. Uh, The script was well written enough and there were a lot of great one-liners. The story wasn't super, super far-fetched, although some of the things in it are very like unlikely. Um, But with that being said, it did fit the profile of creature features from the late nineties. Lots of plot holes, but none of them were really a deal breaker. Yeah, uh, I honestly thought I would find this movie dumb at this stage in my life, but I had a great time with it. Yeah, because it's, it's been a very long time since I watched it too. Yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, quality. I gave it a six out of ten, like you did. Um, I said the cast is filled with '90s A-listers, and of course Betty White, who's a god-tier actress. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of comedic breaks throughout, and the actors all did a decent job playing off of each other. Considering the fact that Bridget Fonda comes from a long line of Hollywood royalty, I was surprised to see her being probably the worst actor in the movie. Um, The CGI croc was awful, but that's a given for that time period. And the animatronic croc did look pretty good, um, though it's too bad they didn't use it more. Yeah. Because the crocodile, like between the CGI and the animatronic combined, it only had like three minutes and like 23 seconds of screen time. Yeah. So I like, thought it was lower than that, to be honest. Yeah, I guess. But I mean, like that whole end scene, it's there quite a bit. That's true. Yeah. But yeah, like we don't really see it until like halfway through the movie. Yeah. When Betty's feeding it a cow or the bear, whichever comes first. 
Yeah, I think the bear. Yeah. 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 But yeah, so a five out of ten and a six out of ten for me. Nice. All right. You guys know our scores. Let's head on over to Rotten Tomatoes and see what they've scored it. The critics' consensus. <clears throat> Betty White's delightful supporting turn may be worth the price of admission alone, but Lake Placid is swamped by a smarmy script and inability to deliver on the creature feature mayhem. All right. What do you think the critics rated it? I just want to look up what smarmy means. Touche. Uh, ingratiating and weeding Weedling in a way that is perceived as insincere or excessive. Okay. Okay. That didn't really help me at all. To be honest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a lot more words that you have to look up now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to say. Fifty-two. A little bit lower. Forty-seven percent. Ah, I was going to go forty-six. <laughs> on 96 reviews and an average score of 5.1 out of 10. The audience rating was a 37%. Really? Yeah. On 100,000 ratings and an average score of 2.9 out of 5. Oh, okay. I just want to add a little note here. Okay. That all of these scores mm-hmm. were lower than Velocipaster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As I was typing them, I was like, oh my God, Velocipaster had like a 60 from the critics, and the audience gave it like a 70, didn't they? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Well, I mean, I'm sure that. Those hundred thousand ratings are like probably since Rotten Tomatoes started until now. Yeah. Whereas of also pasture, it's like only within you know the past two years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Still. Uh Letterbox has a 2.7 out of five. Um, which like it doesn't sound as bad, but I feel like it sounds worse when you like have it as the percentage. Yeah. Because like 30% and it had of like a what 2.7 four you said or two point two point nine out of five. yeah so that's higher than 30 percent, isn't it out of five yeah that would be um 5.8 so 58 percent. is letter is rotten tomatoes out of 10 or out of five the critics rating is out of 10 the audience rating is out of five oh, okay yeah so, so i mean so the critics rating would be a 51 percent. yeah like their yeah. average average score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, I gave it a three point five out of five, and uh, I liked it. Mm-hmm. And Mark gave it a three out of five, and you also liked it. I did. Uh, Slash and Captain gave it a two and a half out of five, and Scream and Cinema gave it a three out of five. Nice. There wasn't enough slashing for the Slash and Captain in this one. <laughs> no, no. All right, cool. You ready for that scare section? Yes, sir. All right. What did you give it for a scare rating? Scare rating, I give it a 2 out of 10. Uh, There were some great kills, but the CGI kind of took away the gore factor. Mm -hmm. Like the first kill, like they had uh, the realistic, you know, kill yeah but then like the other ones were like just very quick and didn't really see much of the aftermath so mm-hmm. kind of took it away yeah uh scary scene i said when the guy gets his head bitten off <laughs> did not expect the croc to jump out of the water and just bite it like clean off like yeah pretty impressive and Agreed. then where I survive i said uh, well, I wouldn't be swimming in the lake, especially if I know there was a giant <laughs> crocodile in it. So, yes, I would survive. Nice. Um, you would think that you and I sat together in math class and cheated off of each other for these <laughs> answers. Um, my scare rating, I also gave it a two out of ten. Mm-hmm. I said, not enough death, not enough gore, not enough croc. 
The underwater scenes and the tension give this a bit more than a one. Okay. But other than that, it falls short. Scary scene. I said, buddy getting his head bitten off. It took me by surprise. Yeah. Would I survive? Yes, because I'm not getting in the fucking water with a 40 foot croc. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can copy my notes, but you got to change it around a little bit so they don't know that we're cheating. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed this movie. Um, yeah, me too. I, yeah, I definitely had a really good time with it. And like for Sarah to even sit down and watch half of it with me, I was really surprised. Yeah. Cause like she started off reading a book and then she actually put the book down and was like watching. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. So yeah, I was, I was surprised. Yeah. I mean, um, like with last week's movie, like this is like a good movie to, well, I would watch this on my, on my own, but like it'd be a good movie to throw on like at a party or something, you know, with friends, just yeah. have on the background. Yeah. Yeah, you don't really need to pay attention to anything. Just kind of have fun with it. Yeah. All right. That's it. That's it. So next week, um, whenever you suggested this movie, I actually had to look it up to see if these creatures were prehistoric. Oh. And it turns out that they are. Okay. Um, Not these ones that we have now, but there were prehistoric versions of them back back in the okay back in the old days um but anyways yeah next week we are going to be talking about piranha 3d yes or as seth says piranha yes because i mean we could we could change it if you want no i'm down man okay Okay. i'm down for sure what you want to do like placid 2 so I was going to say the Meg, maybe. But, uh, I was honestly thinking about texting you earlier, and I was going to be like, dude, we we missed the mark. We could have did the Meg. But no, I'm good with Piranha, okay. for sure. All right. It's it's a really fun, stupid movie, and I think we'll have a good time talking about it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. And it does fit the profile. Because yeah. there yeah. were prehistoric Piranhas. Yes. Much bigger than what we have now, but they were there. I mean, same with the crocodile, right? That's true. So, that is true. There you go. They were not 40 foot piranha, so I can <laughs> we can say that. No. Um all right. So yeah, join us next week as we or while we talk about piranha 3D. Yes. In the meantime, if you guys want to check us out on social media, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at a podcast on Elm Street. If you click the link in our bio on Instagram, you'll find links to our T Public account where we have our merch. Uh, you'll also find links to our Patreon account if you wish to support the podcast that way. There's also links to our YouTube channel, our Discord server, um, our individual letterbox accounts, and anywhere that you can listen to us. Yep. So, yeah. Go follow us on YouTube. God yeah. damn it. God damn it. <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have to do another co stream here. Soon. Yes. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Um, I really want to like maybe sit down and like mm-hmm. have a sketch, like schedule things out with you. Yeah. Cause I don't know. I'm, I'm digging the, the Saturday night resident evil streams, but yeah, I know that you need to get on there too. Yeah. So I don't want to just like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if no. you want to do Fridays and I'll do Saturdays or we can figure something out. But, yeah. We'll figure it out for sure, man. Yeah. But yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I know you're having fun with it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'd really appreciate it if you went on there and subbed and yeah. watched some of the shit. Yeah. And click the little bell so you know when we're going live. That's right. New videos are going up. That's right. Um, there will be. I'm slacking because Velocipaster is still not up there. Um, but I finished editing the video tonight. So it's going to be up there at some point tomorrow for sure. Very nice. Yes. Cool. All right, man. Well, well, that's it. Yep. Alrighty. Well, we'll talk to you guys next week. See you later.